Hi, students and faculty and alumni and professor, everybody that's watching for the LTS community. I am sitting here with Dr. Litch. She's been kind enough to um, talk to me for a few minutes. And one of the things she's introducing is this weekly check-in that she's going to be doing different communications. And um, I get to talk to her in person. Um, by zoom so she's in her home i'm in my home but um we still get to connect and one of the questions and things i was interested in was um dr litch has a almost like a, a seashell correct dr litch it's like a, a like a like a like a scallop shell that's sideways that's part of her communication and um she told me a little bit about it but i think you will be fascinated to hear about it if you could tell the students and everybody listening what that um, means to you and why it's important for this communication to be part of this. Well, Beth, thank you. And I'm so glad you noticed that in, and thought of asking that question because that symbol on the banner that will be over these weekly communications is so profoundly meaningful to me. And I think it also links to where our community is at this particular time when we're feeling some uncertainty and some stress because of an unwelcome uh, pandemic that has hit our entire world. And so um, this symbol is something that brings me strength and courage and comfort for these times. So I'd love to tell you and our seminary community more about this. Um, you're right, Beth, it's uh, a stylized symbol of a scallop shell, and it represents an ancient pilgrimage across northern Spain called the Camino de Santiago de Compostelo, which is a Spanish word for the way of St. James. Santiago is St. James. Uh, and so it's... Um, something my husband and I did beginning in the year 2007. Uh, we went over to Spain anyway because our daughter married a Spaniard and we visited over there and we took that as an opportunity to walk this ancient pilgrimage across northern Spain. And um, the, the pilgrimage um, starts in southern France. You cross over the Pyrenees Mountains and then you go from the east to the west and you end up in this city called Santiago, which legend says the bones of the apostle James are buried. And that is James, the brother of John, the sons of thunder, uh, the uh, apostles who accompany Jesus, uh, who's portrayed so often in the gospels. So, this pilgrimage is ancient. It goes back at least to the Middle Ages. Uh, St. Francis walked this pilgrimage of 500 miles. And today, people still walk it. And it's um, a very deeply meaningful experience in many different ways. Um, what you do is, is you wear a backpack. Um, you might walk 12 to 15 miles a day. And you follow the symbol and this is the exact symbol sometimes the rays point this way to point the direction that way or it might be positioned this way so you follow the the path that way or even straight ahead so um it's really a metaphor for your walk with god it's a pathway not to reach God as God is the destination, but more of a sense that God is walking with you on the pathway and the journey of life. And as I said, it, it links to me with our situation today in this COVID-19 crisis, because there is uncertainty, there is stress, there are new things we have to learn. We have to depend on the generosity of our community and the goodwill of people who might even be strangers and that's what it's like to walk the Camino. So when you walk the Camino, you don't know where you're staying that night. 
Uh, you, you set out in the morning. Um, you have a little guidebook that, that lists different public hostels where you can stay. Um, many of these hostels are just great big rooms where they have bunk beds and uh, you're assigned a bed and you sleep with a um, hundred different strangers in a great big room. And uh, you get up very early in the morning before the sun gets up, before the sun comes up, uh, so that you get a good start on the day before it gets too hot. And you follow these uh, flecha, that's what, uh, this is called flecha. And uh, you may have noticed that I wear a necklace that, that has the same symbol. Uh, it's that important to me. So the, the experience um, really tests your, your physical strength. It tests your ability to trust that you will have the basic things of life without guarantees. Will you have a bed that night? You might find that the hostel's full and you just have to keep walking. Uh, you don't know what you're going to eat. Um, along the way, there are cafes and um, places to stop. You go through fields, a lot of fields, and uh, uh, urban settings, rural settings. Uh, sometimes you're just walking on a dirt path through um, a field and you're not quite sure you're on the right path. So um, it's an experience of adventure of contemplation. And as I said, you depend on the generosity of people you meet. Um, people from all over the world walk this. And even without speaking the same language, you're having the same common experience. And you share anything in your backpack that somebody might need. Um, you share band-aids with each other because uh, many cases you have injuries along the way and you share your lives as you're walking along you have the time that you don't normally have to reflect and talk with with people you're just meeting and um i wanted to just share one particular story that uh really has shaped my life tremendously um, when i was on the camino my physical injury was blisters on my feet. Mm. It was so painful, and um, I just didn't have the kind of feet that were that were right for the Camino. And I always had to tend to my feet and my blisters. And one day, I arrived in a city with my husband, and I could hardly walk. I was crippled. Mm. I just hobbled into town. Uh, we got to the hostel. Uh, my husband went off to explore the rest of uh, the city and I asked the person at the desk in the hospital, you know, is there a doctor that I can see? And the person said, well, there's a special clinic uh, for pilgrims staffed by volunteer doctors and uh, it's just two doors down and it opens in 10 minutes. So I managed to, to get to the hostel. I sat on the stone steps outside before it was unlocked. Um, I saw these two young women arrive uh, who were just full of life and vivacious and, and talking to each other. And then a man arrived on a motorcycle, um, gray hair, ponytail. He uh, parked his, his motorcycle. The, they all embraced each other and laughed and talked and uh, they unlocked the door. It was a doctor and two nurses. Mm -hmm. And so we went into this clinic. I, I was the first one in line. I laid down on the table. I looked up at the ceiling and there were balloons all over the ceiling. <laughs> These were really fun people. And they created this joyful experience for injured pilgrims. So they only spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. I only spoke English. Somehow we communicated. Uh, the doctor lanced my blisters, put new fresh bandages on them. Uh, the, the nurses were, were so sweet and so attentive. And um, I indicated with my hands walking, you know, could I continue the Camino the next day? 
that's what I was concerned about. And the Spanish doctor went like this. In other words, no. <laughs> oh, uh, and I started to, to weep a little bit, um, not because I was in pain, but because I was so disappointed and I didn't want to disappoint my husband because I knew that he wanted to keep going. And um, so uh, to tell you the truth, I felt like I was meeting Jesus and two of the disciples. The way they treated me with care and love, the way they healed my wounds, uh, was such a tremendous relief and healing to me from complete strangers. And I said, you know, can I pay you? I try to, you know, imitate money somehow. And when they finally understood what I was saying, it, it was no, it was free. It was a free gift. And so... Um, I went back to the hostel and uh, my husband and I would have to catch a bus and go back to Madrid, uh, you know, to take a break. And um, as it turned out, there was another young woman, a college age student, who also was injured at that time. I think it was her knee gave out on her. And so um, it was a gift that we were able to give her to help her get back to Madrid as well, you know, to get, we traveled together to find the bus station and to find our way back. So I tell that story because I think that we're on kind of a Camino right now. Uh, we have a time of uncertainty. We have a time of stress. We have a time of wounding. And we also have a time that's an opportunity to rely on people we may not know so well, even complete strangers who generously help us and heal us and share the way together. And it's a way, it's a time of deepening our trust in God to provide, to answer our prayers for ourselves and for each other and for the world. And so that is why uh, you use Gallup Shell on these messages. I hope that we can bring help and comfort and peace to one another. May it be so. Thank Amen. You for, and um, Beth, I hope that you also are experiencing um, peace and opportunity to deepen your life with God and with the family and Christian community and our seminary. Thank you.